It's Caesar the Circle Ape again talking to you about special segments in circles. I was considered special once, and now I'm leading the apes to destroy the world! First thing we're talking about is the segments of chords theorem. That says if two chords intersect in a circle, then the products of the lengths of the chord segments are equal. So let's take a look at our example down here to see what this means. We have two chords here, this red chord and this purple chord, and they intersect at this point. Now, when they intersect, it actually divides or separates each chord into two separate segments. The red chord is separated into two segments with lengths of A and B, respectively. The purple chord is separated into two segments with lengths of C and D, respectively. Now, what this theorem is saying is that if I were to multiply the lengths of the two segments of one of the chords, so A times B, that would equal the product of the lengths of the other two chord segments, C times D. So, all this is saying, again, if you have two chords that intersect in a circle, the lengths of the two segments created by each chord multiply together to equal one another. Time for you to learn about circles while I go eat a banana! Example time! So example one says find each variable, round answers to the nearest hundredth if necessary. So we have two chords here, and these two chords intersect inside of a circle, meaning they separate each other into two separate segments. Now we just learned the segments of chords theorem, which says that the lengths of these two chord segments multiply together to equal the lengths of these two chord segments. So that means that eight centimeters times three centimeters is gonna equal four centimeters times X centimeters. Now all I have to do is just multiply this out and solve for X. So eight times three gives me 20. 4, 4 times x is 4x. Divide both sides by 4, I get x is equal to 6 centimeters. Part B, doing the same thing. We have two chords that intersect inside of a circle. When that happens, they separate each other into two separate chord segments. And the segments of chords theorem says that the lengths of these two chord segments multiply together to equal the lengths of these two chord segments. So all I have to do is take x plus 1, multiply it to x minus 3, and set that equal to x minus 8 times x minus 4. Now all I have to do is solve for x. So how do I do that? Well, on each side here, I have a binomial times a binomial. So what I need to do is I need to FOIL on each side. Here, I I multiply the first terms, I get x times x, which is x squared. Multiply the outer terms, I get x times negative 3, which is negative 3x. Multiply the inner terms, 1 times x is 1x. And multiply the last terms, 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. I then combine the middle terms, because they're like terms, and I end up getting x squared minus 2x minus 3. Over here, doing the same thing. Multiply the first terms, x times x is x squared. Multiply the outer terms together, x times negative 4 is negative 4x. Multiply the inner terms together, negative 8 times x is negative 8x. And then multiply the last terms together, negative 8 times negative 4 is positive 32. I then combine the middle terms because they're like terms and I end up getting x squared minus 12x plus 32. Now I can solve for x but we have an x squared on each side. What do we do with that? Well we can actually subtract x squared from each side of this equation and the x squareds cancel each other out just leaving me with negative 2x minus 3 is equal to negative 12x plus 32. Now we can solve for x. So what I'm going to do is get all the x's to the left side of the equation. I'm going to add 12x to both sides. Then I'm going to add 3 to both sides. Divide both sides by 10. I get x is equal to 3.5. <laughs> you try! Okay, doing the same thing. We again have two chords that intersect inside of a circle, separating each chord into two separate chord segments. And the segments of chords theorem says that the lengths of these two chord segments multiply together to equal the lengths of these two chord segments multiplied together. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 3.1, multiply it to 7, set that equal to m times 6.5. We then solve for m by multiplying these together over here, dividing both sides by 6.5. We get m is approximately equal to 3.34 feet when we round to the nearest hundredth of a foot. That's two decimal places. Part B, doing the same thing. We again have two chords that intersect inside of a circle, separating each chord into two separate chord segments. Now, the segments of chords theorem says that the length of these two chord segments multiply together to equal the length of these two chord segments multiplied together. So what we're going to do is we're going to take x, multiply it to x plus 10, and set that equal to x plus 7 times x plus 2. We then simplify each side and solve for x. So over here, we're going to distribute the x to the x and to the 10. On this side, we need to foil. So we go first terms, we multiply together. X times X gives you X squared. Multiply the outer terms together. X times 7 gives you 7X. Multiply the inner terms together. 2 times X gives you 2X. Multiply the last terms together. 2 times 7 gives you 14. Add together those two middle terms, you get X squared plus 9X plus 14. Now we need to solve for X, but each side has an X squared. Well, that's okay because on both sides, it's 1X squared, meaning if I subtract X squared from both sides of the equation, they actually cancel each other out. And now all I have to do to solve for X is just subtract 9 x from both sides, I get 10x minus 9x, which is just 1x, or x, and that's going to be equal to 14.
Now the secant segments theorem says if two secants intersect in the exterior of a circle, then the product of one external secant segment and the entire secant is equal to the product of one external secant segment and the other entire secant. Now let's break this down with our example down here. Here, we have two secants, this purple secant and this red secant. And we know they're secants because they intersect the circle at two separate points. Now each secant is broken up into two separate segments. This purple secant is broken up into two segments, one with the length of x, one with the length of w. This red secant is broken up into two segments, one with the length of z, one with the length of y. Now I want to focus on this purple secant right now. This segment out here, whose length is w, we call an external secant segment because it's part of your secant, but it's outside of the circle. In our red secant, this segment right here, whose length is y, is also an external secant segment because it's part of your secant, but it's outside of the circle. Now what this theorem is saying is that if two secants intersect at a point outside of the circle, which is what they do here. Then the length of one external secant segment, which we call W here, times the length of the entire secant, which would be W plus X, is going to be equal to the length of the other external secant segment, which is Y, times the entire length of the other secant, which would be Y plus Z. That's what this theorem is saying. W times the quantity W plus X is equal to Y times the quantity Y plus Z. Now, example two says find each variable round answers to the nearest 10th if necessary. So we, again, are given a circle and we're given two secants that intersect at a point outside of the circle. So in order to solve for K, which would be the length of this segment of the secant line inside of the circle, what we're going to do is we're going to use the secant segments theorem, which says the length of one external secant segment times the length of the entire secant. So six times the quantity six plus eight is going to equal the length of the other external secant segment times the entire length of that secant. So seven times times the quantity 7 plus k. So I now have an equation with one variable that I can solve for k. So what I'm going to do first is what's inside the parentheses over here. 6 plus 8 is going to give me 14. I then multiply together the 6 and the 14. I get 84. On this side, I distribute the 7 to the 7 and to the k. I then solve for k by subtracting 49 from both sides, dividing both sides by 7. I get k is equal to 5 inches. Bananas good. Humans bad. You try Okay, doing the same thing. We're given two secants that intersect at a point outside of the circle, and we're tasked with finding the length of one external secant segment. So how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to use the secant segments theorem, which says that if you have two secants that intersect at a point outside of the circle, the length of one external secant segment times the length of the entire secant is going to be equal to the length of the other external secant segment times the length of that entire secant. Meaning what we're going to do is we're going to take P and multiply it to the quantity P plus 19, and then set that equal to three times the quantity 3 plus 11. So now all we have to do is solve for P. Over here we add what's inside the parentheses together. 3 plus 11 is going to give you 14. And then over here we distribute the P to the P and to the 19. Now we multiply the 3 and the 14. We get 42. And we have a P squared and a P and a constant. So what do we do? Well anytime this happens you get everything to one side of the equation set it equal to 0. Now we have a quadratic trinomial set equal to 0. So how do we solve this? Well we think back to our Algebra 1 days. To solve a quadratic trinomial you can use the quadratic formula or you could use some type of factoring. Well what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor this using a magic x. In a magic x I multiply my a value which is 1 times my c value which is negative 42. Put that in the top of our magic x. Then I take our b value which is 19 put that in the bottom and think about two numbers that multiply together to make negative 42 in the top and add together to make positive 19 in the bottom. That would be positive 21 and negative 2. So when I factor this it factors into the quantity p plus 21 times the quantity p minus 2. Now since both of these things multiply together to equal zero, I can use the zero product property and say that either P plus 21 has to equal zero or P minus two has to equal zero. I solve each of these equations for P and I get P is equal to negative 21 and P is equal to two. Now, the issue here is I'm dealing with the length of a secant segment, meaning my length can't be negative 21 yards. So that can't be one of my answers. My only answer here then is going to be P is equal to two yards. Next, let's talk about the tangent and secant segments theorem. This says if a tangent and secant intersect in the exterior of a circle, then the square of the measure of the tangent is equal to the product of the measures of the external secant segment and the secant. So let's take a look at our example to figure out what's going on here. So we are given a tangent to our circle. And we know it's tangent because it goes up to the circle and intersects it only at this one red point right here. We also have a secant. And you see that the secant and the tangent intersect at a point outside the circle. Now, what this theorem says is that because your tangent and your secant intersect at 
a point outside the circle, the length of your tangent, which we're calling t. If we square that, that's going to be equal to the length of your external secant segment, y, times the length of the entire secant, the quantity y plus z. So again, this theorem is just saying that t squared is equal to y times the quantity y plus z. Now example three says find each variable and round to the nearest hundred if necessary. Assume that segments that appear to be tangent are tangent. So in this example, we have a circle and we're given a tangent and a secant. And the tangent and the secant intersect at a point outside the circle. And we are tasked with finding the length of this tangent. So in order to do that, we need to set up an equation in order to solve for r. So to do that, we're going to use the tangent and secant segments theorem, which says that the length of a tangent squared is going to be equal to the length of your external secant segment times times the entire length of that secant. So in other words, r squared is going to be equal to 8 times the quantity 8 plus 16. Now all I have to do is solve for r. So to do that, I'm going to add what's inside the parentheses first. 8 plus 16 is going to give you 24. Multiply the 8 to the 24, I get 192. And now I have to solve for r. So to get rid of this square, I'm going to square root of both sides. And anytime you square root a variable squared, on the other side, you need to put plus or minus. On this side, the square root and the square cancel each other out. On this side, because we're dealing with the length of a tangent, we know that r cannot be negative. So we're just going to take the positive version, the principal root, and we say that r is approximately equal to 13.86 meters when we round to the nearest hundredth of a meter. Time for you to try, or I'll be a monkey's uncle. <laughs> Okay, part eight, we are again given a tangent to our circle and we're given a secant and the secant and the tangent intersect at a point outside of the circle. And we are tasked with finding one of these secant segments here. So what we're going to do is use the tangent and secant segments theorem, which says the square of our tangent is going to be equal to the length of the exterior secant segment times the length of the entire secant. So in other words, we're going to take 15.9, we're going to square that and set it equal to 10.6 times the quantity 10.6 plus x. Now all we have to do is solve for x. So over here we're going to square the 15.9 and then on this side what we have to do is distribute the 10.6 to the 10.6 and to the x. We then solve for x by subtracting 112.36 from both sides. Dividing both sides by 10.6 we get x is equal to 13.25 kilometers. Part B, doing the same thing. We again are given a tangent and a secant, and both of those intersect at a point outside of the circle, and we are tasked with finding one of the lengths of our secant segments, the length of our external secant segment. So how do we do that? Well, we need a separate equation in order to solve for this. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the tangent and secant segments theorem, which says that the square of our tangent here is going to be equal to the length of our external secant segment times the length of the entire secant. In other words, rad 174 feet, we're going to square that and set it equal to x times the quantity x plus 3x plus 5. So now all we have to do is solve for x. So we're going to simplify inside these parentheses over here first. x plus 3x is going to be 4x plus 5. And then over here, the square root of 174 squared, those two things just cancel each other out. We're left with 174. Now we distribute the x to the 4x and to the 5. And now in our problem, we have an x squared, we have an x, and we have a constant. So what do we do? Well, when this occurs, we need to get everything to one side of the equation. So we're going to subtract 174 from both sides. And now we have a quantity quadratic trinomial set equal to zero. So in order to solve this, what we need to do is either use the quadratic formula or factor it in some way. If you're not sure how to factor this, please check out the video on factoring quadratic trinomials. So when this factors, it factors into two different binomials that multiply together to make this. That would be 4x plus 29 and x minus 6. Now what we do is because this times this equals zero, that means by the zero product property, we can say that either this has to equal zero or this has to equal zero. So we're going to solve each of these for x. Over here, we subtract 29 on both sides, divide both sides by 4, we get x is equal to negative 29 over 4. On this side, we add 6 to both sides, we get x is equal to 6. Now we look and figure out what were we finding? We're finding x, which is the length of this external secant segment. Well, the length of an external secant segment, the length of any segment, can't be negative. So we're going to say that x is equal to 6, that's our only answer. So we say x is equal to 6 feet.